All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, and welcome to episode number 75, yes, big 75, of the WMAC Report, regular show where we go over everything going on within the world of women's mixed martial arts. Tonight, War of Words has been going on over at one championship between champion Angela Lee and Denise Zamboanga. We'll go over that in a little bit. First, let's start where we always do with this past weekend's fight results. So first up, we're going to... Spain, Madrid, Spain, for AFL Valkyries, their first ever all-women's MMA event. Uh, like five fights in the professional women's divisions. First up, at Adam Waite, Andrea Menaces defeated Sabina Boutin via TKO. Two minutes, two seconds of the third round. Menaces climbed to 1-0. Oh. Boutin fell to 0-1. Oh this was about what you would expect from... Two fighters making their debut. Not all that talk about there. Uh, next up at flyweight, Aitana Alvarez defeated Yamila Sanchez via unanimous decision. At, if I didn't mention it, at flyweight, Alvarez climbed to one and zero. Sanchez fell to two and five. Again, not a whole lot to talk about here. Um, then up at strawweight, Maria Garcia defeated Alice Machalkovich. At strawweight, via unanimous decision, Garcia climbed to 1-1. One one. Michalkowitz fell to 0-1-1. You know, it's like the third fight in a row. It's, I mean, nothing too much to write home about. But then we get into the co-main and main event. First up, in the co-main event, at Adamweight, for the vacant AFL Adamweight title, Emily Mata defeated Rita Moreira. Via TKO at 4 minutes 46 seconds of the third round, Mata climbed to 3 0. Marrera fell to 2 3. This was a good fight. And Mata, man, she is one to keep an eye on at Adam Weight. Very strong, has some power, very nice finish in the third round. Like I said, keep an eye on Emily Mata. And then in the main event at strawweight for the vacant AFL strawweight title, Mikkel Deseni defeated Audrey Karouche via TKO due to ground strikes. Three minutes, 22 seconds of the third round. So second straight third round finish in the title bouts. Deseni climbed to eight and three. Karouche fell to seven and six. Deseni showed off her ground game here a lot in this fight. She took Karish down with ease and was able to pass her guard with ease, landed some ground and pound, did all of that. Very nice performance there for Nicole Deseni. And man, the outpouring of emotion from her when she won. Wow, you could tell this title, like, even if you never heard of AFL before, you can tell that this winning this meant a lot to her. Uh, then... Next up, at KSW 55, they had one ladies bout in the strawweight division. Karolina Wojcik defeated Sylvia Juskovic via unanimous decision. Wojcik climbed to 7-2. and two. Juskovic fell to 9-6. and six. Tough luck for Juskovic. She was coming off, I think, a two-year layoff. Uh, Wojcik coming off, I think, about a year. Good fight. Very close fight. I had it 1-1. One to one going into the third round, and it was a close third round as well. So if you have access to this bout, uh, go check it out on Fight.TV. Wojcik, very fun, very exciting fighter. Uh, one to keep an eye on in the strawweight division. I hope she's not stuck in KSW because I would like to see her come over to the U.S. and compete at some point just to see how she does there. She's also very undersized at strawweight too. I don't know if she'd make Adam weight, but she's definitely on the small side of straw weight. But very exciting fighter to watch. Next up at Bellator number 248, or also known as Bellator Paris, had a flyweight bout between two French women. Lucy Berthaud defeated Maggie Burchell via unanimous decision. Berthaud climbed to excuse me, Berthaud climbed to three and two. Burchell fell to ten and five. I actually missed this one. I heard it was an all right fight. I think I turned it on during the third round. So I'll have to go back and check this one out. And then finally, UFC fight night. Marias versus Sandhagen had one ladies bout in the bantamweight division. 
Tracy Cortez defeated the late comer Stephanie Egger via unanimous decision. Cortez climbed to eight and one. Egger fell to five and two. Cortez really showed off her grappling chops against someone who is not only a judo black belt, but also apparently a BJJ black belt in Egger. Uh, Cortez looked really good, really well prepared in there. You know, Egger took this fight on short notice. Hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, I expect the UFC to keep her around for at least one more fight to show what she's capable of. But Cortez, again, looking good at bantamweight, and she's somewhat undersized for bantamweight. This is only her second fight in that division she fought. Uh, all seven of her previous fights down at flyweight. So very nice results for Tracy Cortez. So that was this past weekend's results. So let's move into the news. Not a whole lot to cover, so let's get it done with. Uh, first up, a targeted bout for UFC 256, December 12th. Uh, strawweight, Mackenzie Dern, 9-1 versus Verna Janjaroba. Now keep in mind, this fight has not been official yet. It is targeted. And I'm making that emphasis because of what's next on the list. The targeted strawweight bout between Carla Esparza and Amanda Hebos slated for UFC 256 on December 12th, is now off. Now, I emphasize that it was targeted and slated, not set. Uh, this fight was never technically officially announced by the UFC. It was always announced as targeted. Even when I did my announcement video for, excuse me, for this fight, I made sure to mention that it was targeted. And honestly, because of this, I'm not doing any more announcements for fights that are targeted, only official bouts, because a lot of people are getting on Esparza's case, and it's if the fight was never made official, then you can't really say a fighter backed out of a fight if it was never official. And I say that not only as an Esparza fan, just because I hate when people say, oh, a fighter's ducking, a fighter's ducking. The fight was never signed. If the bout was never signed, or if, excuse me, if the bout was actually signed, the UFC would have been talking about it. They would have already been hyping up this fight between Esparza and Hebos because Esparza's a top, you know, 10 fighter. Hebos was just outside the top 10. She's in it now, and we'll go over that in the rankings later. But yeah, if this bout was actually signed, UFC would already be hyping it up because they've been hyping Hebos up a lot. But it was never official. It was only targeted. So I just want to emphasize that. Uh, next up, another targeted bout for UFC on January 30th in the flyweight division. Roxanne Modafferi, 25 and 17, and Viviani Araujo, 9 and 2. That should be a good one. Um, you know, Araujo, she does have some skill, but she also relies a lot on athleticism and strength. Whereas Modafferi is very good at taking fighters who rely on those two things more than technique and showing them what, you know, they basically taking them out. So that could be a good one between Modafferi and our Ujo. Next up, we have an official bout announcement for XFC 43, November 11th. Strawweight, uh, former Bellator, UFC, and P uh, World Series of Fighting fighter, Jessica Aguilar, 20 and 8. She's taking on form UFC and Invicta vet Danielle Taylor coming in at 10 and 5. Should be an interesting strawweight bout between two good strawweights that are outside the UFC. Uh, next up, uh, one inside the matrix inside the matrix goes down October 30th in Singapore. They've announced a 115 pound bout between Ritu Fogat 2 and 0 and Nusre Pove 1 and 1. You know, I mentioned I've talked about her before. Ritu Fogat is one championship is looking at her as part of their like entryway into the Indian market. Her family's uh, pretty well known in India. Whole family of highly competitive wrestlers. Then at LFA 94 goes down October 30th in Park City, Kansas. They've announced a strawweight title bout. Defending champ Vanessa Demopoulos coming in five and two, taking on Lupita Godinez coming in at four and zero. Oh. Demopoulos. She won the title against Sam Hughes a couple months back, and then, like, within two weeks later, took a fight at Dana White's Contender Series. Didn't go her way, so now she's back to LFA, still the champ, defending her title for the first time. And then finally, BJJ Black Belt, 
Aya Murakami uh, will be making her pro debut against uh, Moeri Suda at Deep Jewels 30 on October 31st. Murakami is replacing the crazy B fighter Leon Noda who is out due to injury. So that is it for the news. So let's go down to where we always go next after the news, the rankings updates. So no rankings updates for one championship this week. Honestly, ever since they came out with their rankings, they haven't updated the at least the ladies' rankings. So, however, the UFC has a bunch of updates. So, let's start at straw weight. Now they removed um, Tatiana Suarez from the straw weight rankings due to not only the current inactivity but expected future inactivity. So, a whole bunch of people moved up. One fighter moved down. And we got one fighter who is back in the rankings who was previously unranked. So, Yanni Janjacek up one spot from four to three. Carla, excuse me, Carla Esparza moves up two spots from six to four. Gadelia moves up two spots as well from seven to five. Nina Anseroff moves down one spot from five to six. And she'll probably end up getting removed at some point as well. Although she did have the baby, who knows when she'll be back. Um, Michelle Watterson is up one spot from 8 to 7. Marina Rodriguez up one spot from 9 to 8. Yan Xiaonan up one spot from 10 to 9. How about that? She broke into number 9, and I don't think she's beaten a ranked fighter yet. Amanda Hebos up a couple spots from 12 to 10. She moves up two spots. Now she is firmly at number 10. Uh, Tisha Torres stays where she is at number 11. Okay. The only fighter who stayed where she was in this whole list. Uh, Angela Hill moves up one spot from 13 to 12. Mackenzie Dern up one from 14 to 13. Verna Janjaroba up one spot from 14, or excuse me, 15 to 14. And then Felice Herrig is back in the rankings at number 15. So these rankings are getting really, really interesting in the strawweight division because you have fighters that are moving out of the division. You have fighters who are being removed due to inactivity. And you've got fighters now in the top 15. Well, pretty much everyone from 12 to 14, Hill down to Janjaroba, none of them have ranked wins. He bosses at number 10, has no ranked wins. Jan is at number 9. I don't think she has any ranked wins. Uh, Marina Rodriguez has the one win against Tisha Torres. So, yeah, a lot of big moves in the strawweight rankings really shaking up. Pretty crazy because you've got all these ranked fighters now who don't even have any ranked wins. Just very interesting to note. Then over at flyweight, uh, two fighters switch spots. Cynthia, or excuse me, Jennifer Maya moved up to number two from number three, and K Cynthia Calvillo moved down from two to three. Okay. That's, honestly, that's just more just, that's purely based on justifying, uh, well, honestly, Jennifer Maya should be up higher than Cynthia Calvillo. Cynthia Calvillo has one fight in the division against Jessica I, who's now down at number five. And Maya has been fighting a lot longer at flyweight. She's a former Invicta champ, and she's fighting the champion coming up in, I think, December. So yeah, she should be ranked higher. I have no problem with that. Then over at bantamweight, uh, these, this one makes, these moves make no sense. Lena Landsberg is up from 12 to 11, and which moves Macy Chason down from 11 to 12. Meanwhile, Lena Landsberg is pregnant and is gonna be out for the foreseeable future. So tell me how that makes any sense whatsoever. So those are your rankings updates for this week. Now, sadly, one of the best people on the rankings panel, uh, Mike Kowal from My MMA News, has actually asked to be removed from the panel. I think he just hated the being one of the only publicly known people or people who's well known to the MMA public, I should say, that's on the rankings panel. I think the pressure might have gotten to him 
because a lot of people were just complaining to him about all kinds of stuff like that was largely beyond his control. So unfortunately, we lost a good one on the UFC rankings panel. So expect it to get even wackier at this point. So that's it for the rankings. Let's move into this weekend's events. First up, Thursday night, Bellator 249. Seems like Thursday is going to be Bellator's new home. Bellator 249, one ladies bout, the featherweight championship main event. Chris Cyborg coming in at 22 and 2, taking on Arlene Blanco coming in 13 and 7. Gonna go over the stats here real quick. Cyborg coming in 22 and 2, Blanco coming in at 13 and 7. Uh, Cyborg's the older fighter, 35, excuse me, Blanco's the older fighter, 37 to 35. Cyborg is taller, 5 feet 8 inches, 173 centimeters. To Blanco's 5 feet 5 inches, 165 centimeters. Cyborg is also the longer fighter, 69 inches, 175 centimeters. To Blanco, 67 inches, 170 centimeters. Now, I already did a full preview video on this, somewhat full preview. Um, please go check that out. I'll try to remember to link it in a pinned comment down below. Uh, what was Cyborg on this one? And then Friday, LFA 93 has one ladies bout. It's at a 120 pound catch weight according to Tapology. Sam Hughes coming in at four and one, taking on Danielle Hindley, also coming in at four and one. Uh, Sam Page coming in, like I said, four and one. She's coming off a loss to Vanessa Demopoulos via inverted triangle submission two months ago. Before that, she was undefeated. Um, Hindley coming off a win via shoulder lock submission a year and a half ago. Before that, she was coming off a, a loss a year, year and 11 months ago to Alyssa Kron via rear naked choke. I don't have an age for Sam Hughes. Hindley is listed at 36 years, most likely the elder fighter. They're both listed at 5 feet 5 inches, 165 centimeters tall. I don't have a reach available for Hindley. Um, Hughes has a reach of 64 and a half inches, 164 centimeters. I'm going with Sam Hughes on this one. Yes, she is coming off a loss, but she has been the much more active fighter, uh, having two fights this year. And honestly, I had her coming very close to winning that uh, title fight against Vanessa Demopoulos. It was a very close, very good fight. Um, but I think I had her ahead, if I remember correctly. Hindley, I only recognize one name on her record. I haven't honestly seen her fight, which counts, is gonna, unfortunately, just counts against her. So I'm going with Sam Hughes on this one. Then on Saturday, first up in South Korea, we have ARC number three, one fight in the strawweight division. Yoo Jin Shin, the teenage high school girl fighter coming in at two and O. Oh. She is taking on the debutante Yu Jung Kim. So Shin Yu Jin versus Kim Yu Jung. Um, I don't have any stats available for these two at all, other than their win loss record. Now, Yu Jin Shin, she made her debut nine months ago via split decision. And then. Really? Yeah, she made her debut nine months ago. And then TKO'd. Jisoo Park just a little over two months ago. Now, this fight was supposed to go down back in August. The whole event got pushed back due to a COVID resurgence in South Korea, so it goes down this weekend. I'm going with Yoo Jin Shin to win this. Just because I've seen her fight, she looks very promising, and she's like 15 or 16 years old. So we're going with the teenager to come away with the win here. And then finally, on Saturday night, UFC uh, fight night, Ortega versus Korean Zombie has won two ladies bouts. First up, at flyweight, Gillian Robertson coming in eight and four, taking on Pollyanna Battaglio coming in eight and two. Savage Robertson coming in off of a win over Courtney Casey via rear naked choke. Three months ago, preceding that with a loss to Macy Barber 11 months ago via TKO. Battaglio coming off a win over Lauren Mahler a year and five months ago, preceding that by a loss to Cynthia Calvillo down at strawweight, I believe, a year and 10 months ago. 
Batalio is the older fighter, 31 years to Zavid Robertson's 25 years. Batalio is going to be the taller fighter, 5 feet 8 inches, 173 centimeters, to Robertson's 5 feet 5 inches, 165 centimeters. Batalio will also have a reach advantage, 67 inches, 170 centimeters, to Robertson's 63 inches, 160 centimeters. So Batalio is one of those very like hyper aggressive fighters and comes out and likes to just really maul her opponents. Robertson has shown a weakness to that. Uh, she got mauled by uh, Jillian, excuse me, Macy Barber in that fashion. And Barber was, you know, physically bigger fighter. Now, Batalio used to fight at straw weight, but I'll bet she's bulked up for flyweight now. If Robertson can get past the savagery of Batalio, I can definitely see her coming away with the submission. Batalio has fallen prey to them before. So I'm going with Jillian Robertson to win this one. Then in the co-main event at flyweight, Jessica Andraj taking on Catlin Chukagian. Andraj coming in 20 and eight, Chukagian coming in 14 and three. Andraj coming in off of two straight losses to Wei Li Zhan and then Rose Nama Yunus via split decision. That just happened three months ago. Chukagian coming in off of a win to Anina Shevchenko four months ago, preceded by a loss to the champ. Valentina Shevchenko via TKO eight months ago. Chukagian's the elder fighter, 31 years to Andrade's 29. Chukagian is going to be the much taller fighter, 5 feet 9 inches, 175 centimeters, to Andrade's 5 feet 1 inches, 155 centimeters. Also going to have a reach advantage, not as big as the height, though for Chukagian, 66 inches, 168 centimeters, to Jessica Andrade's 62 inches, 157 centimeters. So, you know, Andrade, she is coming off those two losses at straw weight, but you're talking about losses to two of the best in the division. Whereas, and now she's taking on a very tough first fight at straw weight, or excuse me, fly weight, in Catlin Chukagian, who is, you know, for lack of a better uh, term for it, you know, she's basically Holly Holm light is what she's known as. Um, this is going to be a tough one for Jessica Andraj. If um, Chukagian can keep her on the edge of her height and reach, which is significant, Chukagian could cruise to a decision. If she fights a lot like the way Holm does, or the way she usually does, which is basically keeping fighters at the edge of her reach, she can easily win this. Now, Andraj, in order to win this, is going to have to get in close. She's going to have to take it to Chukagian, which Andraj has been doing, is very good at doing. And she showed some improved head movement against um, Rose Nama Yunus. She's going to have to bring that as well. Maybe bring in some other new tricks as well. I just think she's going to have a very hard time doing it against Chukagian, who is one of those fighters who really wants to stay. You know, like I said, she's Holly Holm light. She likes to stay at distance. She likes to throw and land strikes at the farthest extent her reach will allow. And she's good at making those strikes seem more than they are. You know, she's a, she's a, she's a hut hut or ish ish fighter. It's going to be a very hard one hard uh, fight for Andraj, I believe. As long as Chukagian does that. I'm going with Catlin Chukagian to win this one. Most likely, of course, by decision. Okay, so those are the upcoming fights for this weekend. So tonight I want to talk about, there has been a war, a war, excuse me, a war of words going on over in one championship. Very unusual for this promotion for fighters to be talking back and forth, smack talking each other. It really all started with, you know, once Angela Lee announced that she was pregnant, the champion, the 115 pound champion, Angela Ansopbo Lee. Now she is 10 and two as a pro. She last fought a year ago in October, uh, defended her belt successfully against the 
champion from the next weight class up, uh, Seong Jin Yan. Um, it's been a year since she fought, and then she just announced that she's pregnant and won't be back until sometime late next year. Now, the number one contender in her division, Denise Zemboanga, basically said that Angela Lee should vacate the belt because she's not due to inactivity, basically, and because she's not going to be fighting. And Angela Lee basically took that, I think she took it kind of the wrong way. She basically implied that Denise Zamboanga basically just wants to be uh, handed the belt, which honestly, that's not what Denise said at all. You know, she wants the belt vacated so that, you know, she can then fight for it. Um, and it went back and forth, back and forth, you know, Angela Lee doing most of the talking. Uh, Zembawanga said, you know, it's not fair to put for Angela to put the division on hold while she has the baby. And Angela Lee basically saying, well, the division is not going to be on hold because of the upcoming Grand Prix. So Zembawanga basically believes that the title should be on the line for the Grand Prix since Angela is not able to defend it and hasn't defended it for over a year already and won't be defending it for almost two years, basically. And Angela Lee just did not take kindly to that at all. She said the division is not being held up because of the Grand Prix and all of that. And then finally, Chachri Sityotong, the CEO of One Championship, came out and basically defended, you know, his star, his favorite fighter, Angela Lee, going, we're not, we'll never ask a fighter to, you know, relinquish the belt without losing it or due to disqualification. Let me see if I can find exactly what he said here real quick. Just real quick, let me look, see if I can bring this up here. Okay, Chet Reset Yotone said on, I believe this was Facebook, one Adam Weight world champion, Angela Lee, will not be stripped of her title and or be asked to vacate. One championship has never stripped anyone of his, her world championship title. For me, there are only a few reasons that an athlete should be stripped and or be asked to vacate his, her world title. Cheating, unwillingness to defend, criminal activity, or retirement. Any other reason would be unfathomable. It is not right to take away someone's greatest achievement earned through a lifetime of sacrifice and hard work. I have no doubt that Denise Zamboanga will face Angela Lee in the future. I am a big Denise fan. She is a young rising star with so much potential. I love her aggressive style and her big heart. In fact, she would be one of my favorites to win the one Adam Weight World Grand Prix Championship. If she wins it, Denise will have the rare opportunity to become the first female in history to hold both titles if she ends up beating Angela too. If anything, winning the ultra prestigious one Adam Weight World Grand Prix Championship would establish Denise as one of the best pound for pound female athletes in the world and erase her current status as a young rising star. That being said, I would not count out the other seven athletes invited to compete in the tournament. Far none, it will be the most elite Adam Waite World Grand Prix in the history of martial arts. I will be announcing shortly the eight superstar female athletes invited from around the world to compete in the one Adam Waite World Grand Prix Championship. And yes, Angela has already made plans to defend her title against the winner next year. Uh... He goes on to talk about basically defending Angela. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people have implied that um, Denise Sambawanga attacked Angela because of her pregnancy, you know. Which, honestly, I don't think that's true at all. Listen, Angela Lee is not what anyone would call an active, a very active champion, okay? Let's look at her record here. Uh, she last fought October of 2019. She defended her title against Jing Nan Xiao. That was October 2019. So basically, you're, you're going, she's already gone on a year now without defending the title since then, okay? The first six months of the year got screwed up because of COVID. Fine. But one championship returned. 
Well, they have, they've had more trouble than other places have because of how, being how international they are. But when was the last time Angela defended her title before that? You have to go back to May of 2018 when she defeated May Yamaguchi via unanimous decision. So that's a year and a half between title defenses. What did she do in between that? She went up a weight class, tried to, tried to beat Jinnan Seon, or Seon Jinnan at her, at her weight class and failed to do it. But then did she, that was in March of 2019. But then did, did she go back to her own weight class and defend her title, which she probably should have done after taking that loss? No. She took another loss at 125 pounds to Michelle Nicolini in July of 2019. So she spent, took two fights at a higher weight class, took two L's when she could have just defended her title. So a year and a half between title defenses for her to, to fail at trying to grasp another title and then take another loss at that weight, higher weight class. Now, like I said, she defended against Mei Yamaguchi in May of 2018. Her last bout before that was in May of 2017. So in the last three and a half years, she has three title defenses. That's not, okay, that's not really too bad. But when you consider the fact that she's now about to go another year, that's gonna be four and a half, three tit title defenses in what, four and a half years. Or, going from 2018, she's gonna be, 2019, 20, 2021, three and a half years really on only two title defenses. That's, that's very inactive for a championship level fighter. And you know, you can say, oh, well, injuries and whatnot. Okay, fine. But the fact is, she is not an, in a very active champion. She's actually one of the least active female champions in MMA, if not the least active, as far as defending her title goes. So honestly, I think Denise Zamboanga makes a very good point in that, you know, she should, Angela probably should vacate the title. She hasn't defended it in a year, and she's about to go basically two years without a defense. And then after that, after having gone a year and a half before that. So yeah, that's two title defenses in three and a half years. That's going to be sad. That's not, that's not what makes a champion. Now, what works against Zamboanga's case, though, besides Chachri making that announcement, is that, yeah, one championship does not strip champions for inactivity. Brandon Vera, their heavyweight champion, is proof. That dude has gone like two years be between title bouts as well. So unfortunately, one championship is working against her in favor of their star, Angela Lee. So that's really what I want to talk about tonight was, you know, that was, if you go follow, if, go follow both of them on uh, Instagram, Denise Zambawanga and then Angela Lee, and there were some articles about it, I believe, AsianMMA.com talked about it. And then if you go to SCMP MMA, the YouTube channel, SCMP MMA, they actually did a video where they talked about it. And, you know, I differ from my buddy, John Hyun Ko. He sided with Angela. Personally, I got to side with Denise because you're about to have a whole Adam Waite Grand Prix for that's not going to result in anyone being an actual champion. All because your champion isn't going to fight for two freaking years. Personally, if you're going to have that big of a Grand Prix, I think it should be for the belt. And also, champions make more money. So you have Angela Lee sitting on this belt, not making money, whereas you know most of the fighters in one championship come from poor countries. That championship money means a lot more to them than it comes from Angela Lee, who basically comes from a well-off family. So... Yeah, I kind of side with Denise Zamboanga on this one. I'm not hating on Angela Lee. I'm just laying out the facts here and why I think the facts support Zamboanga's view. Um, let me anyway. Let me know your thoughts on that. You know, 
Like I always say at the end of every video, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because that's it for this episode. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to WMMA Scene Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.